Hi, I'm Miles Z, and today I will be showing you how to use PC Stitch to take any image or photograph and turn it into a cross stitch pattern. This method will work similarly with other software, any internet software, KG chart, anything else. Some of the steps may be a little different, but the outcome will be the same. So what you will need to turn your image into a pattern is you will first need your image. You will need an image editor such as Paint.net, GIMP, or Photoshop. And you will need your cross stitch software such as PC Stitch, KG Chart, Pick to Pat, anything like that. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the image in our editing software. I like to use Paint.net. It's free and it does everything that you need it to do. You can, if you have GIMP or Photoshop, use those, but you don't necessarily need those if you don't have them. So now we have our image, and the first thing we want to do is adjust it. And we want to make the colors as even as possible. We don't want anything that's too white or too dark or really anything that's too extreme. The more even the colors are, the easier the cross-stitch uh, software will have with the design. I like to use curves. You can edit this however you want. It can be a little fiddly, and you may have to do it a few times before you get it right. But once you've done that, we're going to crop the image because we don't want this guy's hands or his hair or anything. We just want the birds. So we're going to crop out everything that we don't need. And now we have an image that's pretty good. We can stitch this. It'll look really nice. The problem is that it's a little big to be stitched, so now we have to resize it. And to resize it, we're just going to go up to Image and Resize. And we have all of these options. Make sure that you set it to best quality or whatever the equivalent in your software is. And then down on the resolution, we're going to set that to 18 because we're going to stitch this on 18 count ADA. And underneath, we can decide how big we want it. So we want it 12 inches tall and it automatically adjusts everything else for us from there. So we make sure that it all looks right. We like the way it looks and we hit OK. And now our design is a little on the ambitious side, but it is still doable and you can change those values to whatever you want if you don't want it that big. But now what we need to do is make this a little bit easier for the software to turn it into stitches. So we need to go up to an adjustment or an effect and add some noise. And you want the color intensity to be way down at zero, the coverage to be up at 100, and the intensity tends to be anywhere between 15 and 30, depending on your image. And that just gives the image a little bit of dither so that you don't have these solid bands of color. And if you're fine with how that looks, go ahead and save the image because now we need to open it in our software. And to do that, we just go up here to import and we find our image right there. And then we have a whole bunch of other options that we need to go through. We need to make sure that the floss is the correct floss that we'll be using and that it has all of the available colors to us. And then we need to make sure that the size is correct because it will automatically downscale it to 100 uh, stitches wide. So when we do that, we go ahead and make sure everything else looks good and we hit preview to see how that looks. And now we can take a look at this and decide whether or not we like that. There are a few other adjustment options that we can use that are built in. You can change the brightness, the saturation, the contrast, everything like that. But since we already did that externally, we're just going to go ahead and say OK and bring this into the software. And it may take a little bit to load sometimes. And now we have our image in the software and we can zoom out to see if we like it. And the first thing we see is that there are all these colors. So we want to go in and reduce the entries. And that will tell us that there are about 280 colors and that might be a little bit too much for us. So we want to go ahead and see if we can reduce that to a number that's a little bit more comfortable. So let's try 150 first and we'll see how that looks. And we take a look and we can see a whole lot of big black patches. So 150 is probably not going to be enough. So let's go ahead and bump that up to 200, which might still be a lot, but it's a little bit more comfortable than, than closer to 300. And we take a look and those black patches are mostly gone. And that looks like a decent kind of 
image that won't look too messy. It's still got a lot of color variation, but it doesn't have almost 300 colors. 200 is a little bit more manageable, so let's just make all of those other colors that we don't need disappear. And there they go. And now we want to make sure that we don't have any duplicate symbols because this is something that PC Stitch does. It has a couple of duplicates, so we want to find one of these little hourglass looking symbols right there. And we want to find one and just turn it into something else because when we have two of the identical symbol, that creates problems. So we don't have that anymore. But there we go. That is the simplest way that you can take any photograph and turn it into a pattern that can be stitched. And there are a bunch of other options that you can play with in both PC Stitch and in KG Chart and any other application software. Some of the web software, they won't have a whole lot of these options, but you can still do what you need to do with them. And part of the reason that you want to prepare the image externally is so that you can skip having to adjust it in the software. But I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, please be sure to put them down in the comment box below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Patreon page for extra perks there. And I will see you next time. Bye.